Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is The Amateur where we're here to just talk life, hobbies, politics, ideologies, what have you. And on today's episode, we're going to be hitting into economics. And I really want to highlight the, not hidden gem, but just the most unknown gem that is Thomas Sowell. But before I begin, sorry, but before I begin, I want to talk about Marxism. Um, so in doing so, <clears throat> we'll go, I'll go into what um, it's defined as. So first is understanding that Car Karl Marx, uh, which is what this belief system is, um, or ideology is named after was German. And I don't know, I just feel like there's been, there was something in the water in Germany because you had, what was it, you can't, Bach, Blumenbach, the guy who pretty much started race, which I, as you may have seen, which I think is the most contrary thing. You have Hitler, again, race, and you have Marxism and the stupidity that this is about to be. I shouldn't say stupidity, but the uh, it's not founded in anything that's true, okay? But anyway, <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I gotta get my opinions out of the way um well actually this is the point is for my opinions anywho so the definition of marxism according to yourdictionary.com is to define marxism in simple terms it's a political and economic theory where a society has no classes there is no rich there is no poor there is no wealthy there is no impoverished okay that's essentially what he's saying every person within the society works for a common good and class struggle is theoretically gone. And there's some blank spaces and it says, actually many horror movies and dystopian books are written based on trying to create a classless utopian society. Um, so essentially Marxism is anti-capitalism at its jump because it wants to force an equal outcome of everybody. And, and you may have seen with my previous video as far as understanding equity and equality that both are actually really dumb um, <laughs> in a sense like yeah in a sense like in a sense <laughs> um, but especially equity like to achieve an equal outcome like that's probably one of the silliest things and like, we live in a culture and some people I mean, some people agree with his theory, um, but it's not found in the truth. But again, I'll explain why. So he wants to achieve an equal outcome. Um, so pretty much starting everyone at a different point of a race. So everyone's people are in a race. They starting them at different points or changing the lay of the land, the environment or whatever you want to call it so that they start at a place where the race goes and everyone finishes at the same place um so that's one thing um another thing that was, has been said about marxism according to marx is in a um that he's very much against religion um and he that he says it plays a role in maintaining an unequal status quo and he's also very much against the family because it um also maintains this passive role of just accepting hierarchy so again, all of this is very much against the order of Christ and biblical Christian teachings, which is that there is a hierarchy. I've said it once before, and I'll say it again, and the hierarchy is God, man, wife, children. Right? Emphasis on wife and not women. God, man, wife, children. Okay. But it's a ranking system um, in, in, in simplistic terms. And so... What the tradition was and what the tradition is in Christianity um, is that God and Christ is the head, the man submits to Christ, the wife submits to her husband, and the children submit to their parents in that order. And if everything within that order is followed correctly, your household is, is blessed and it's, and it's uh, living within the standards of what? Christ calls us to live. That's the family, okay? And like family, family is 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 the the nuclear family again. Is kind of the point of America, but Marxism and his theory are against religion. They're against family. They're against um, 
uh, uneven distribution. I don't want to say uneven distribution, but they're against people having their own wealth. And also with the family, what he didn't like is that is the concept of generational wealth and that he doesn't want that he thinks a family owning their property and transferring it down to their children is essentially wrong. Um, and the theory of Marxism has later led to um, the implementation of things such as socialism and communism. And I think let a previous rant out is that, um, you know, where socialism and communism, or I guess where the ideals of Marxism have been tried to be implemented, they've been wholly a not, they have not been successful, is what I will say, as far as with overall growth, productivity, uh, affluence, wealth, status, whatever you have. So that would be countries like North Korea, countries like Cuba, countries like Venezuela, um, all those countries that are implementing it are very much in shambles. And it's also not something that I won't say that the that the people want. I think especially with something like North Korea where the people don't even know like some of them some of them don't know how bad their situation is because they don't have the connections to eat like they don't have that electricity, that internet. They don't have the the means or resources to know that there is even something better out there, you know what I mean? So like even then it's like that for Venezuela, for Cuba, that there are people that are protesting and they're like, hey, I think this might be a better way that we can run our society. And like, you just look at comparisons of where capitalism has been in place versus socialism. Um, and the, the, the difference is, is astounding. And so um, with Marx's belief, it's that it's, it's, I don't, I, I think he means well, but it's also fundamentally flawed, which is, and this is the problem with uh, diversity hires and equal opportunity, not equal opportunity, but like equity and making sure everything reflects appropriately is that you're forcing a outcome that may not have been the case. And so his, what he, his first fault is just, um, as far as with the Marxist ideology, from what I see, uh, just uh, I'm not I'm not an economist e e e economist <laughs> obviously I'm like, again I'm an amateur but just surface level what I see is in the again the original fundamental fundamental assessment is that he's placed a wrongness on inequality and that it's wrong for things to be not equal and to that I say no and just like sometimes the inequality is the point like it, it is the point like they're not supposed to be the same. So two is not supposed to be equal to three. Two is just supposed to be two because that's what two is. Two is less than three and we, we're not, we're, we can't have all numbers be the same. You know what I mean? So as far as like with the just a logical approach, but then if you just look at life and nature, it's like we are not the same. I'm not the same as someone who was born in 1950. I'm not the same as someone who uh, was born in the 1800s. I'm not the same as someone who was born in LA. Like these are all inherent differences that we can't necessarily control. We can do our best with the own decisions that we make, but to force an equal outcome in some places is almost to force the own wills and desires of people. And so his problem, at least the framework of most Marxists and socialists and communists is that they feel the worker is being exploited, whereas capital, capitalism wants to have everybody, it wants freedom of choice and you'll hear uh, free, the free market. And so it's something where um, a business has requests this service and they say that they'll uh, pay this service for this amount. They've assessed the work of the labor that they've uh, wanted to do, and um, they they want to pay this much. It's a, a lot about supply and demand, and so when the supply is labor, or I guess the yeah the supply is labor, which is people, and the demand is for those people. It's like I don't know, it's weird to phrase that, um, but essentially that you there's an assumption that people are being exploited if they take a job that a person thinks is worth their level of involvement 
it's really, really weird. It's, 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 it's essentially something where, um, at least how I think it, it's like a job might not pay what you want, and that might be something where, again, if you don't want the job, don't take it, but then you have, if you don't take the job, you're not going to have a job, and you need money to get, you know, things in life, so take the job, but then others, others, other companies that offer jobs, they need this certain level of knowledge, education, experience, or they would like that, or not even knowledge or experience, but like a, a capacity to to do to learn, because you'll hear, you'll see a lot of places that will support on the job training and like other things. So it's something where if you're willing to, pretty much just controlling desires and needs, and so you'll you'll see this especially in like the feminist sphere, how it's like oh it's not fair that men are always are the top engineers or men are the ones in power and men are the blah 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 blah. Like you'll you'll hear other things like well. Maybe a lot of women actually don't have those desires to work in those spheres. And that's like something where I say, so again, like example with, with sports. And that's like a, a really easy one to comprehend. Or as far as with like, there is an uneven distribution of black people who are in um, football and basketball versus those that are in freaking hockey and golf. I don't think I see that, not golf, uh, tennis. Don't see a lot of black people in, in, in golf and tennis, but you wouldn't go tell an NFL athlete, hey, you need to change your desire to play in the NFL to go play in the, the tennis league because there's underrepresentation of black people there. It's like, well, they don't want to, they don't want to play tennis. And that's, is that a fault of the system or is it just an outcome of their desires? You know? So it's like, That makes sense, right, though? So anyway, <clears throat> so that's my basic understanding of Marxism as an ideology and why it ultimately fails, like, almost every single time because it's trying to force people's desires into a certain place and um, wants to take wealth that people have earned and give it to other people who did not earn that earn that wealth out of some need to be giving. And it's like, this is a whole other topic. Let me not get into it right now. The point of that matter, though, is to further explain Thomas Sowell. So I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but Thomas Sowell, who is a economist, a black economist, and he was an astute Marxist. He absolutely advocated for Marxism, especially to be implemented in the United States. He was even taught by Milton Friedman, who is a very pro-capitalist, like in, in college, he was a very pro-capitalist um, and capitalism. So he was taught by, I'm gonna say the father of capitalism, but he was very much um, like he promoted capitalism as a good ideal. And so Marxists, not even Milton Friedman could change his view on Marxism. But then he went to go work for the government who is supposed to be the entity that implements the ideals of Marxism. And he was like, yeah, no changed his mind completely like marxism especially with how our government and how people are which is they're not like by nature they're not giving like that's just something we have to recognize um but that marxism marxism wasn't work and so thomas soul is i think just one of the most brilliant minds of our generation of our age um he's 91 years old right now and still kicking hopefully but he's just his intellect is is just really really like i just don't know why well i know why because no one wants to promote the truth and promote reason and ration in this country right now but but that's what he is about and so that's what he does but like i not a lot of people know his name and he's definitely his works are not being taught in schools and so i just think i just think people need to at least be aware of the things that he does. He has a, a YouTube channel, like this Thomas Soul TV, I believe, and he just always puts out hidden gems and hidden perspectives. And so I think one thing that, as well that's important to note about Thomas Sowell, I think I said he's uh, 91 or, or so. So he was born in 1930. It means he was 20. He was a full-fledged adult during the civil rights era. So where white people were the most racist, going around lynching, like it was just 
Candy, KKK is full, free and active. So he was in the heat of the race, like the biggest spouts of racism, like the like worse than they are today um, in the country. And yet he is not, he doesn't think, he just, he just thinks, he doesn't use that as a, I'm, I've been oppressed my whole life, if that makes any sense, like a lot of people would seem to be doing today. Um, so I think it's important to understand with him as a, an economist that that stuff touches everything, especially because politics and the economy are very much tied. And so all of his um, observations, his books, his, his hypotheses, his theories or whatever are based off the, how the two play into each other. So he, all of his works will touch things like racism and the welfare system and um, immigration status and what, what are things that actually help the people. I'll just spit a little bit. I hope you didn't see that. <laughs> Versus um, things that don't. And so just to close out this video, because it, it went a little bit longer than I wanted. I just wanted to read off some of, some of his top quotes, at least some of the top quotes that have been defined by brainyquote.com. So it says, top Thomas Sowell quotes. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I feel like I'm not. Thomas Sowell? 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 So it says, the next time someone next the next time some academics tell you how important diversity is, ask how many Republicans there are in their sociology department. It is a way to take people's wealth from them without having to openly raise taxes. Inflation is the most universal tax of all. So he's talking about the effects of inflation. The word racism is like ketchup. It can be put on practically anything and demanding evidence makes you a racist. I, you already see my, my talks on race. The least productive people are usually the ones who are most in favor of holding meetings. So with this, what I see here as well is just the whole principles of like virtue signaling and not actually like a lot of Michael Jackson error, man in the mirror, starts with me, starts with me, starts with me, I'm the change, be the change you want to be. Like all that stuff is saying you can't, I mean, even the Bible, like you can't just say it, you got to do it. You got to walk, the, talk the talk and walk the walk. So right now, especially with all this virtue signaling, it's just like walking the walk and meetings, meetings are talking the talk and they're not actually doing the work. So I think that was just uh, pretty relevant. So the first lesson of economics is scarcity. There's never enough of anything to fully satisfy all those who want it. The first lesson of politics is to disregard the first lesson of economics. The problem isn't that Johnny can't read. The problem isn't even that Johnny can't think. The problem is that Johnny doesn't know what thinking is and he confuses it with feeling. Now this is a very, very good quote and I'm, I'm going, to, going to be making a video on this later as far as with especially biblically how emotions and thinking and how they play off. And if you've seen my past videos, you may have seen how um, I've kind of related that to like the feminine and masculine. That's another topic. Um, next is if you have always believed that everyone should play by the same rules and be judged by the same standards, that would have gotten you labeled a radical 60 years ago, a liberal 30 years ago, and a racist today. Hmm. Interesting. People who enjoy meetings should not be in charge of anything. Ain't that the truth? It takes considerable knowledge just to realize the extent of your own ignorance. And I think that's, uh, I think for me, that's like a reflection of Socrates, I believe. It's like, I know that I know nothing, which is essentially like, we, like, we literally only know a very, very finite amount of knowledge about the entire world and it's, it's very true and then the number one quote uh, at least according to this website is it is hard to imagine a more stupid or more dangerous way of making decisions than by putting those decisions in the hands of people who pay no price for being wrong and so Yes, and this is actually, like, I, I don't know, I made a little TikTok, and it wasn't, was it a TikTok? Yeah, it was a TikTok. So I made a TikTok earlier um, um, about that as well, as far as with making a congressperson's pay, I mean, I'll just show it. 
<laughs> hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, okay? So what if instead of paying congressmen and senators, whatever it is that they get paid, which is like a butt time, why don't we pay them either the mean or the median of the state and or district that they represent to include their, their homeless and unemployed? So I think congressmen should get the, the mean or the average of their constituents that they represent and senators should get the median of their state. And the president should get the median of the country. Post-tax income as well. So it's gonna be based off that. Because it doesn't really make much sense for them to making six figures when their constituents are making like 50,000 a year. And yes, it needs to include those who are homeless and are unemployed. So that's going to play into the numbers. Bet that'll fix some things around here if we did that. But it makes sense, right? Should we do it? I think we should do it. We should, we should do that. So yeah, so I thought, like you saw the video, like I think that that would be a way to tie the success of their constituents to the success of themselves. And if their constituents fell, then their people fell. If that's a petition that, oops. If that's a petition that we could get started or like something, cause it's like, and I mean, I've, ha I've had this discussion across some YouTube comments and it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a, I think it's a pretty decent theory, but it's, it's a matter of telling, I mean, we're the people, gosh darn it. <laughs> but it's a matter of telling the congressman and woman to pretty much give up their, um, give up their income pay. So, um, yeah, that was just a thought. So that, that was my take. I think. I think that Thomas Sowell needs to be more on the front lines of human and American history, especially American history. Um, if they're not teaching him in, in, in an economics class, in a history class, American history class, then they're wrong. <laughs> but what do I know? I'm just an amateur. Uh, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.